studio guest there, uh, Philip E.P. Philip E.P. Woods the second from all the way there USA. The program, a special special edition today Sunday. Profile Liberia. We put Liberia under the microscope. Developing stories, past stories. Uh, yes. to do with the EPS uh, and the services they're providing very very poor ones as well by the drivers or the drivers across Liberia how they are playing with life yes we will talk about everything the visit of the president or not visit but President just we are perhaps they stay in Japan. West, we will stand up to fight for our freedom. What are you hoping for? Right they had a very serious meeting according to yeah. according to the report, no. executive manager report, no. bilateral meeting. I got some kind of gossip, boy. Right but it's uh it's rewarding. A happy, happy one too. Right. From all the way to Japan. Yeah. I'll release that later on. Bravo. Yes, uh, there's a planned protest as well uh, on the 9th of uh, September. Um, yeah, well, I think that next week Sunday, next week Monday, right? They say it's a protest against Loon Star. Uh, they say uh, they want to take Loon Star back. They, they want to labyrinth. I don't know. That's not labyrinth. But if I say labyrinth, but I mean there too. I mean, I'm not on They say they want to take Lab Loon Star back. I don't know how they want to. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I call them anyway. I'm hoping that they will reply me so they can come here on Monday tomorrow so they can share with us what is the meaning of taking back Lone Star. Okay, that's coming up. Orange Company is a, um, a second uh, the biggest provider of uh, uh, Orange, uh, let's say, uh, telecommunication in Liberia. Indeed, they too will be talking about it, Mr. Philip E. P. Woods, the second is here. Uh, they say regulation coming over. Eh? Our brain pool already complaining. They say too much, eh, too much. 750 uh, megabytes for two dollars. Oh, God. Mm, eh, God. Eh. We miss it. Oh. All right, the vice president of the Republic of Liberia, we want to say. I want to say uh, sorry for the accident, the incident. But your boys, those boys, eh? we need to send them back to school. I'm talking about driving school, for them to learn everything. 
between Bonga and Vanjama, Bonga and Morovia. How long is that distance? That somebody should be running 102 or 200 miles per hour. I'm begging you, man. Life, you don't have it. You don't have it somewhere store. And when you're gone, you're gone. Value it. All right, uh, shortly, shortly we'll be joined by. Uh, we're hoping to get a signal from uh, our guest. Uh, we see him on the dice board already. Uh, Mr. Woods, if you are there, I guess you are there. Please send the signal so we can pick it up and uh, and you can join in right away so we can start the show. Yes, we're here on this Sunday. Special, special, special edition. Dedicate this show uh, to all of you uh, that are speaking out for justice. Oh, yes. But remember the family of uh, Miss Ode Shaman. She is gone today. She was laid to rest just a couple of days ago without justice. Case. According to what I heard, case is now closed. Oh God, when? When will we have justice for those who need it? And we also see here, uh, Justice, uh, Justina Life is him on rise as well. Justina is right now staying in a hospital. Accordingly, she was adopted, raped, beaten, and injected substance that she doesn't know about. And right now, she's staying in the hospital recovering. And the recovery, according to doctors, uh, have to be in advanced country. So Justina's life is human rights. Do you know that? All right, All right. Got in the, uh, okay. Um, I just reading your text. You say, Okay, uh, wow, so we can have you today, right? We have to reschedule, you, right? No, so, let, let, let's just let's start the program. I just I just asked God for lay excuse to come outside the car and attend to you. <laughs> so you, were, you were already in the church. I already judge. That means that mean, that mean you, you, right. for, you forgot about the, uh, your the schedule then. You see? That was me no, telling you. When we said when you said 3 p.m., I thought it was 3 p.m. my time, no, like no, we no, did it last no, time, no, you know no, what I mean? You know, the, the reason I always put in Liberia there so people can find it easy to calculate their time there. So anytime I bring your guest, I always say this time Liberian time. Because you are a Liberian and you just okay. calculate, you know definitely you're always calling home, you know the time home. So you can calculate your time and say, okay, I can't do it that time, I can do it this time. Then we can agree upon. So, well, it's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for so, the time anyway. Sundays are the best time for me because that's the only time I can have time during the course of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but preferably, I like it after church hour, like after 1 p.m. my time. I was talking about four hours difference. So you three hours different. Yeah, four hours five, different. Man. You're talking about. Around five. Yeah, four, five o'clock, like four, okay. five, like time. All right. The next time we we, maybe we, on, we, on, on, we the next time we scheduling you, we we'll make sure that uh, you know uh, you you, you we, we fit in within that scope of your time. Five p.m. LRB time. Okay, but you gone uh, you gone you gone. Um, how do you call it? You frozen though. Maybe that network. Are you guys you know? Uh, yeah. Sorry. What happened here is uh. Sorry, uh, I got interrupted. Actually, I have a gadget that I could use for such uh, purpose, but then I didn't bring it with me as service. Okay. I had this uh, um, surface. All uh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah, and, and mostly most of the times is I would like to advise my guests. You know, if coming on the show, sometimes it's good to to set your your phone on uh, how to call it. Um, do not disturb. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, once yeah, an interruption. Coming, yeah, course coming in, it can be interrupted. Labyrinth right. course. Mister Woods, I don't know how much time you got for us, but let's keep the ball rolling. Um, happy Sunday to you. Uh, happy first Sunday as well. Today the first as well, first Sunday, and today the first of September. So it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
let's let's start out with current event. Uh, 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 you're quite involved in. I mean, I mean that's your country, but you know, some some of us we've been in the diaspora for long, but we don't really care. Some oh, of them, me, I don't, oh, care. I don't care why they want to do that and do it. So I don't know where are these people, whether they have uh, family members back home or so. But even if you don't have family members, the part of the matter, your root is from there. The, these words, yeah. I don't care. I don't care whatever goes on there. I don't think you know it's it's, it's worth it. But let's. Yeah, you 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 always um, concerned and always posting and always uh, trying to uh, push for the better for Liberia. Let's start off with latest development. Um, uh, your pre the president of Liberia is in a, perhaps is stay in a, is in a, uh, is in Japan. And our understanding is that I want to attend uh, a summit on Africa that is uh, that is uh, sponsored by Japan. Uh, in that uh -huh. uh, we saw um, news from the executive mansion saying that. Uh, they had a bilateral meeting, uh, meaning uh, when two presidents happen to meet, or two head of states happen to meet, as uh, you know, in bilateral meetings, uh, always, uh, especially from the developing country perspective, you you intend to beg, you intend to seek for help, you intend to you know get some benefits. What what are your uh, I, do, do you have any hope that maybe the, the president will get some. Uh, green light from Japan, uh, even by virtue of begging also? Well, uh, uh, actually, I have not really been following uh, his trip to Japan uh, because we had this election, and then after the election, I just got somehow disappointed and probably been busy with my own activity on this side. Uh, so I really haven't been into the Japan trip. But uh, when you talk about people traveling or government officials traveling, one thing I expect, there are two, two, two or three basic things in Liberia I expect uh, our government officials to be concentrated about. The first thing is human resource development. That's the first thing Liberia needs. We need to add value to the people. Training, it may not be academic education, but vocational education should be one of the first priority any government official that care about our country should be concentrated about. Now, many times when I'm watching videos on Liberia, my concern is drawn to the number of young men you see standing by as bystanders. The number of young men you see that talk so naively, talk like children, talk like babies, you know. The young men that, you know, embrace violence. The young people that, have, that embrace corruption, those bad stuff, you know, in our society, for me, it worries me because it means that we're not going anywhere. It means now that we need to live in a metal home. Steel is... All right, uh, we're still experiencing some problem, uh, like a connection problem there. <coughs> so, yeah, it's um, one of those things, especially when, uh, when the interrupted calls are coming in. But never mind. Uh, Fighting for your freedom. Those of you that can always be insulting people. <laughs> we are fighting for your freedom. And indeed, no matter what it is, we'll be we we'll keep fighting for your freedom. Freedom. We we'll we we'll keep fighting for your freedom. You know, if you want it, you don't want it. Some of us are as advocates that what God to us to do. Together, right? Uh, freedom fighter. We here.
feel free down, no matter what. All right. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Max, I apologize, man. Um, I'm so sorry that I was not really prepared because of uh, the time difference. And then uh, and using my that, phone that, is... is a, it, yeah. So, low just until my battery can die. Let me just see if we can talk a bit. But next time we'll prepare ourselves better, probably... Um, yeah, I will find another time we can sit down and talk about it. So, back to your cons your question. So, my concern first is drawn on those people I see standing by those young men. Those young men between the ages of 15 to 40 years old. You see standing by, and when you listen to that conversation, it's very disheartening and disappointing because people at those ages, people at those ages should be very busy in our society. They should be doing a lot of things. Being mechanic, being painters, being a uh, technician, going to the agriculture sector. But everybody in our country is not concerned about politics. Everybody concerned about government. And the most ridiculous part of it is that it's not good governance. Everybody embracing uh, corruption. See the recent election we had in Liberia. And let me be very clear. I don't know Tila Ure from nowhere. When she was nominated by the CPP, quite frankly, it took me time to come and be guiding know her. It is true, I'm a know her dad, I'm a know her mommy, I'm a know her, but I don't know Tila Ure, so I just went out so fast to start to speak about her. So what I did was I started to research her, went on YouTube, saw some of her activities, and I saw some. Abu Kamara is a friend of mine. I know Abu Kamara, we worked together before. He had a business that used to render me services, render my business services. He was doing a communication business. So we are friends that we, you know, we, we roll together. But I think for me, Liberia is, is a more friendship. Liberia is a more friendship. In that much as I thought that Tila Yuri were kind of young on that side, listening to her and uh, saw her making sense, you know. I said, oh, but I think she's by far better than me selecting my friend who just admitted that he fraud government. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when the CDC to us, Hope for change, we thought maybe these are some of the ills in our society, George Bria are going to stay again. For me, I had never ever had a confidence in George Bria in terms of leadership. Never. I'm on record for that. I'm very clean. From the day George Bria decided to enter politics, I have objected him. Not because I hate him, but because I feel that uh, he don't have leadership ability. Now, there are a lot of people that I know that offended George Weir in Liberia, that squandered his money. Right, this is going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, uh, this breaks in can actually uh, cause problems for my recordings or videos if I want to send them to YouTube. Um, I refuse them because of uh, this break in uh, as well. Yeah. 
All right, we just uh, we just uh, we just uh, lost our student as our guest there, uh, Mr. Philip E. P. Woods II, because uh, 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 there's a technology course coming in and you know uh, kicking the, kicking you out. But yes, uh, we're looking at um, this is a special edition of Profile Liberia, um, and they we're profiling uh, what is trending on Liberia and um, how. Uh, how, are, how are you following things as well? We want you to call and, and participate. But let me talk while we, we stay and wait for uh, our guest to come back, guest analyst to come back, uh, Mr. Woods. Um, <clears throat> let's start off with the latest about this accident thing. You know, uh, you must have seen now uh, on social media, the, uh, there, was a, there was an accident on Banga Highway. Accordingly, uh, somewhere around 15 gate. And this accident, those that were involved in the included office of the vice president, in which of course, are, according to the story, it was in fact the vice president convoy and a taxi using the same road. Our understanding uh, still unconfirmed yet uh, that more than one person died and several persons got wounded. In fact, what I, what I learned is that the entire the entire passengers The entire passengers in the taxi all died. And also I understand that the driver of the EPS, that is the Executive Protective Service, that is a security that provides VIP protection, especially for our elected officials, including the, the president and the vice president, that the driver of that vehicle died. In this regard, I thought that perhaps we can bring uh, this issue of uh, recklessness in using our rules in Liberia. This is causing a huge, huge, huge problem. We continue to lose our citizens day by day. Yes, day by day through accident. The majority of of those accidents can be avoided. Yes. But unfortunately, every month, maybe two or three times you will hear about a very, very nasty accident. Very, very nasty accident. And you hear that Many, many people died. And some people, if they survive, they will have a life-changing injuries. But why do we continue to experience this? Why? These are some of the questions I'm asking. I want you to call as well and make your input. What can we do, be it a citizen of the Republic of Liberia, or you being a road user also, every every time you are in the traffic, you could be a driver or just a passenger as a business person or so, what can we do to actually cut down this accident issue in Liberia? You know, some of us have talked and remember the last government, uh, the LNP has been a very good friend to me, to be honest. And every time I'm going back home, I have to at least take small presents for them. And on many occasions, uh, I met the chief of traffic there in Liberia. And most of the times uh, we, we, we meet, we talk about, I raise the issue of, uh, you know, the reckless 
way our people are using the roads and you know there are too many accidents or so what are we doing now uh, something try to quiz But the only answer I will get is, oh, Max, we're doing our best. We're raising awareness um, also. But here is it. Awareness, awareness raising is very important. But how frequent you do it does matter. But just like um, the issue of HIV and AIDS in my own country, Liberia. You know, worldwide, December 1st is regarded as a World AIDS Day, right? And the governments uh, across the world, you know, put programs together and execute them on that day. Now, in the case of my country, Liberia, even though the issue of HIV and AIDS is very, 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 very concerning and serious, but we are still waiting for December 1st to engage the people, to engage the young people, to engage the, the, the communities, to raise the profile of the issue, to raise awareness. We wait for December 1st. And on that day, we do whatever program we have to do. And after December 1st, we've gone back to bed. So it's a similar thing with this, um, how do you call it? A traffic awareness racing. The Liberia National Police, the Ministry of, uh, the, the Ministry of Transport, To, together with other ministries and agencies that's supposed to be working together, ensuring that indeed traffic rules are are taken to the people. The traffic rules are respected. Traffic rules are kept to our foreheads. These people are not working enough for us. That's why this is a country that just anybody can get behind the steering to start driving. Yes, anybody. This is a country that once you become a car loader for two or three months, the next months you are behind the steering and you're driving the next thing you come across that person they will even produce a valid license to drive and this is a country that people are so reckless when they are using the road this is a country that people don't even respect the rules of engagement if it comes to the traffic. Obeying traffic signs when they say 25 kilometers per hour and somebody is going to 45. Now you tell somebody drive here only 25 kilometers per hour and they go into 45. That's madness. You are crazy. How can you put everybody? No, no, perhaps you at that stage you don't even value your life. But why should you put the rest of the other other other, other people lives, you know, uh in danger? When they said drive here, the just strength KPH kilo my behavior, you gone. And you're flying, you're doing 50. That's madness. And sometimes I know our road users or our passengers that are sitting in those cars, sometimes they do talk. 
they do raise a they do raise a concern and perhaps call on the on the driver please you 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 speeding too much can you know what is speed a little bit and the next thing the person will come on and start asking the question you know how long i've been driving when they start to tell you i've been driving for 20 years i've been driving for 15 years You've been driving for all those years, and so what? And so what? The people in our car, they value their lives. That's, that is what they are telling you. They are calling you to book and telling you and reminding you that your speed have to be controlled, that you have to be on top of things. A driver, especially when they're driving on the highway, they can be so reckless. You know, they can be driving like they have no head on their shoulder. No. Now, sometimes you wonder as to where are they going. You know, but normally what I the, the way I respond to these things is even here when we get on the M4 or, you know, on the motor, motorway, and you see somebody driving behind you with high speed, and you got to give way. Sometimes by the time they are passing, I say, wow, the other person, they're rushing, they're rushing for their funeral, they're too late. That's exactly what can happen on our roads in Liberia. You live in you live in Morovia. You say you're going for a weekend in Banga. You're going for a weekend in um in 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 Kakata. You're going for a weekend in Grand Baza County. And you're speeding late. You are late. You are getting too late for that wonderful big day you are going to. Why don't you plan ahead? Man, the only thing I can say that you are late. You are rushing because you are almost late for your funeral. Yes. The only when you are late for your funeral, that's when you speed like that. The way these guys can speed on the highway. And so before I come, uh, my lines are open. Line two is open. The phone line, of, of course, uh, my um, the video line is also activated. Our guest uh, won't be here again due to a technical problem from his end. So if you want to call and make your contribution, you cannot. You are free to call as well. And I remember. Let me just share this story with you. I remember in just just gone May when I was in Liberia in April. I took a trip to Banga and we were on the highway there and uh, as we were approaching the the curve you know normally when you are approaching the curve your vision ahead is different from when you are in the street road. So you have a reduced vision. That indicates that you have to slow down to a speed that you will be able to control in case there's any danger in that curve. And by virtue of the fact, in all across the world, especially for those who can go to driving school. These are areas that are considered as hazardous. Hazardous area. So when you get in there, you have to be very careful when you get into the curve. And so as we got, we were getting closer to the, to the curve, 
my brothers uh, who are driving uh, is slow down. The next thing behind us was a car, a Jeep, brand new Jeep and mad EPS. This driver, I don't know whether it was a lady or a man in that car driving. Right in the middle of the curve, right in the middle of the curve, that guy, that deep curve, that guy just overtook us. I couldn't believe it, you know. Man, I just, after we we passed through and we got on a straight road, you know, I went speechless for quite a minute or so. My brother had to call me two, three times before I could answer. And he said, but well, what happened with you? I said, no. Didn't you see how that car passed, uh, overtook us just now? He said, well, that's how the people can drive in this country. And that's government car. That may, the person that in that car, they have no, they, they, they have no regards for life. That's why he's driving like that. And I, I just, I just told my brother, I said, I agree with you. Because to overtake a car, another car, two cars in, in the curve, you are sending yourself to death. You are also sending other people to death. And so when I heard about the vice president's convoy, uh, accident that the EPS was in war. It reminds me of this story I'm telling you about. It reminds me of a story way back then during Madame Ellen Johnson's service time. And I think it's about time that the EPS director the Liberian National Police, the Ministry of Transport, and probably the Ministry of Public Works, there's a time that you guys wake up to the reality of what is happening on our roads and begin to educate and begin to do what you need to do for our people to be educated adequately. You drive from Morovia all the way to Lofa County. Now only certain areas you'll see road signs. Yeah. Only certain areas you will see there. 25 miles, 30 miles, 45 miles or so. But there are no road, no road markings visible to see, to know where you're supposed to be, which lane you, see, you need to be in. No road sign to tell you that indeed that area, this particular area you are in is a 30, mile per, 30 miles or, or 30 kilometer per hour. You have to keep just tell. We don't have it. It is not there. And that's why for me I want to appeal to the Liberian National Police, given the fact that these accidents are now almost becoming, you know, a serious, serious problem to our society, our communities. There's a need to do something about it. We can continue to do this. We can continue to do this. We can continue to, I mean, for, for families to be bearing their relatives every day due to human error. I mean, an error that's supposed, that can be corrected, that can be actually avoided. Those errors are errors that we, that, that my children, we have control over. 
Because when they tell you that this is this year from this point now you need to drive 30 miles or 30 kilometers an hour or per hour, you gotta keep money. You can sit, I mean they're telling you 30, and then you go into 50. You have no idea who is coming ahead of you. Also. Now there are reasons why traffic signs are are placed everywhere you know along the road. There are there are reasons, and that's why you see it uh, by virtue of, 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 of the fact you see that you will do twenty a certain distance, and perhaps the next the next distance they're telling you that you should do ten, and by the time you finish with that ten, they're telling you that you can do thirty. You're going further and you see it reduced to 25 or 20 miles, 20 kilometers. We deal with miles here, so that's why I keep saying miles, miles. American people, do they, they talk about um, kilometers. It's important to observe those rules of engagement in the traffic. If you don't observe them, you put your life in danger. You put the life of those that are in that car in danger. You put the the right uh, the, the 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 life of other road users in danger. And in most cases, we can only regret. In most cases, we can only. sit there and complain yet we know that indeed those issues can be corrected by ourselves why are we killing ourselves like this the rules are narrow the rules are not good already these are the problem we are facing in our country why can't we respect the rules of engagement? I mean, once we are using the rules, the rules, some of them follow potholes. And you see somebody is speeding, speeding to go where? I don't know. But the only answer I can normally give to those kind of people is they are speeding. Because they are almost late for their funeral, for their own funeral. That's why they're speeding like that. And they don't want to miss their funeral. That's it. That's why they are speeding like that. Thank you very much, Natasha. Long time. Okay? That's why they are speeding like that. Sometimes it, if, if they just end up that, yes. When they did themselves, uh, have gone fine. But when they are going, they take so many lives with them. So many lives with them. So the EPS the accident and the accident uh, and the and accidents across Liberia, we need to do something about it. It is urgent now, and we got to do something about it. But the Liberian National Police must take the lead. Yes. To begin to raise the profile of of what what we need to do to avoid to avoid accidents. Too many of our people are dying from reckless behavior in the traffic. Too many. And for the EPS, Executive Protective Service people, the EPS director. For me, my recommendation is that. Samuel Doe time, that's a sorry, um, Charles Taylor time, what's happening? Madam Ellen Johnson, Sir Leaf, turn as well. And now, President Weir, it is still happening. Now, if you look at the situation like that, then what you need to do, then you need to go back to the, to the drawing board. 
why are these people making such an act, you know, being involved in such an accident like this? Why? You know, here, what I do notice most of the time is, is that it doesn't matter how long you've been in the police force, for every time and then they're coming up with what they call refresh, re refreshment courses. To refresh in your mind. Yeah. Even for with the drivers, you know, if perhaps you got, you know, you happen to get, you know, one or two times maybe they book you for speed camera, uh, let's say for speeding, the camera book you two, three times or so, even though they're taking, uh, how they call it, taking points from you. But sometimes they will ask you to go attend class. Yes. I remember, I think two years ago, I have to attend. I have to go back to attend a class. I have to go back to attend class. Speed awareness. And I used to get on the M4, uh, on the on the highway. You know, we have we have another link, uh, lane. Sorry, another lane that you can drive uh, very very fast. And but then sometimes when you get in that lane, you know, you can go as fast as you want. But at the same time, you will reach somewhere. It will also tell you that didn't from this point. The next one you have to be on this um, on the, on this speed limit, and um, I don't know. Sometimes I, especially when 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 I'm going a very very long distance, I like to drive somewhere around three a.m., four a.m. or so, yeah, to avoid a uh, traffic and some places that you don't know and they have cameras. And if you you know if your light your hair lights that doesn't, um, you know, flash to it for you to take notes that there's a speed camera ahead of you. And that's the area you're intending you to drive 20 miles per hour. And then you're in, you're in 22 or 23. When you get there, the camera will book you. Yeah. And so, uh, the, Yes, when we when we ask them, you know, about training or so, you know, APS driver driver would tell you that uh, I've been trained for, you know, I was trained in India, I was trained in America and whatsoever. But honestly, then why all of these nasty accidents? Why the recklessness? Why, when you were, I mean, when you were doing your training, they told you that. At a, at, at, a, um, at a curve, a road with a curve that you should overtake there. Come on, man. That a road is a road sign, when the road signs tell you that indeed here is 20, 20 kilometers per hour, that you should do 35. Come on, man. And definitely, that's how some of them can say. So we need, we need an ongoing awareness. Another thing I um, I want us to talk about as well is um, this rubber RIA highway. You know, I think it was last year, sometimes last year, a very early last year. The Presidential aid to the president, Seku Kalasko, did a post in which he shared all our, he was very, very proud to share, share it around. And he said that about 400 poles, light poles were ready to be planted from EAWA Junction all the way to RIA. And within a matter of weeks, there will be electricity. There will be street lights on that road. And we were happy. I mean, when I saw that post, I said, wow, this is going to be great because uh, I've always, um, well, 
most of the times, you know, I, I arrived in, in Monrovia somewhere around midnight at Arai and uh, we have to drive through that dark. And when I heard the story, I said, wow, this is going to be really great. But from last year, somewhere around March or April to now, Those 400 light poles are yet to be seen. Even I was there in April and in time in Liberia, via the ROI highway into Morovia and then leaving, I didn't see LEC working on that road. I didn't see them planting poles. Why are we like this? Why are we lying to our people? All right, let me take Natasha before I go ahead. Natasha uh, Hudson is say, uh, she says, yeah, thanks. To avoid accidents, it is necessary to build good and sustainable roads. Train people to drive correctly and to respect other drivers and pedestrians. I am tired with us. We are not learning for our past. We are not learning from our past and present. Are we cursed? That's the question she's asking here. Are we cursed? Why are we not learning? And we go, like what I was talking about drivers, some drivers were you. And the passenger engage them and tell them, oh, driver, you're running too much. They'll tell you, say, you know how long I've been driving? I've been driving for 20 years now. I've been driving for 15 years. I know what I'm doing. Come on, man. The passenger is telling you that when you're reaching to that, when you know, since you're approaching the, the curb, you should slow down. And you asking them, or you telling them that you've been driving for 20 years. You've been driving for 15 years. And so what? Does that mean that you, you, I mean, you can't make any accident? You can be involved in an accident? That's nonsense. That's been reckless. But those that we, those are supposed to take the lead will be our government officials as well. Because they feel they have those big jeeps and high up jeeps, and um, their drivers are masters of the road, and so they will stick speed as they want. I say you got to stop. We got we 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 got to stop this. We have to get back in the classroom and teach our people. We don't have to call every driver because uh, even the driving schools they have there, I don't even know they do uh, the, theory, the, the theory part of it. Uh, for here in the United Kingdom, before you get behind that, uh, before you get, you know, you, 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 you issue you um, a full driving license because we, we have two types here. Uh, they, they will issue you a provisional, provisional driver, driver's license that you were used to go to driving school. Now, do it, I mean, doing the process of you doing your, especially practical lesson, you will also have to do the theory part of it. That theory, uh, they sell the DVD room, the CD room of it, and they sell the book. Everything about traffic is in there. So you don't necessarily have to go to class and sit in the classroom for anybody to teach you about the traffic rules. But you, you put the CD room in the car, uh, let's say in the computer, and everything about hazard perception is there. From one stage to another, how to avoid accident, how to drive, what speed to be on, when the, when the, when the, when the rules are wet, when you reach into to a curve, when you reach to every other rules, I mean, there is no street light. You know.
and you begin to read, you reading it, you seeing it. You go on the uh, on the DVD that you have to play and you know and practice your test everything. You seeing it. You go in the traffic where you you doing your practical life lessons with a with a, with a, with a, with a trainer. You seeing it phys physically and you are engaging whatever hazard perceptions you're supposed to be coming across. But in Liberia, it's a different case. My understanding that anybody can even get a, driver, a full driver license. Yeah, just get your money. So you, you don't even have to go to, uh, to any school or driving, like, driving school or so. You just ready, you finish with your, I don't know how they call it, cardboard training. If you need spending time with your uncle now, uncle force you to learn, and the next thing you are in the traffic and you're moving. But I agree with Natasha as well. And like I was talking previously, rules, we need to work on our rules as well. Like that, our eye have way. It's dangerous. Lots of pop holes are on our road. Mm -hmm. To be honest, by now, by now, maybe for the past five years, that road should have been um, redone. Remove the entire layers are on there and then re and put new one there. Because that 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 is the road that gave the first impression to our visitors. Whether they are business people coming in the country, you know, or so. First impression. The first impression actually is, it does count a lot. You have to impress somebody. And the only way you can impress somebody, you have to tell them that this is how your life is. But look at our eye. Look at our, our eye. That's the Roberts International Airport. Sometimes you are you are you know you're doing your check in there and electricity gone. So the road itself. When when that's happening in the airport, you think you, when you think about the road, you say, well, well. If it's happening right in the airport, the electricity going, no current, and it's in the dark, and people using touch lights or so, most of the roads anyway. But we need to talk, and we have to talk about it. These accidents can be avoided. And it's time that we work. We all work together to actually cut down these accidents. Too many of our people are dying every day, recklessly, for stupidity. People that are stupid and using the roads. I hate using the word, the S word, but in this stage, uh, permit me, let me use it. They're stupid. Because you can only be stupid when, you know, when you're behind that steering, you can only be a very stupid driver that will be overtaking somebody in the curve. Yes, another car in the curve, or two, three cars in the curve. You will be very, very stupid, or you are the only stupid driver when you are overtaking up to five cars in a row. Yes, that's been very, very stupid. You can... to the line and speak to the caller. Caller, good afternoon. Yeah, hello. Hello, caller. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. Yeah, good afternoon. This is Thomas F. Shapolo. I'm calling from Dali Town, Pennsylvania. Welcome, Thomas. It's a pleasure having you on and happy Sunday to you. Yeah, thank you. Happy Sunday to you too. 
Okay, well, I'm uh, talking about Liberia here. Uh, I've just been raising a couple of issues. Uh, one has to do with this, um, with too many accidents going on in Liberia. What can we do as citizens? What can we, what advice can we give to the authority? And also this RIA as well, the highway up to now is still very, very dark and very dangerous. Potholes are too many, but then at the same time, people can drive recklessly. What are your take on, the, on these issues? Um, for me, for, 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 for my own standpoint, for what I look at like you, is like we are going nowhere. You can have the best of talk show hosts show from now until then, there will be nothing done. You can talk from now until then, there will be nothing done. Because, number one, you got a government. Who doesn't care about the ministry of the we shouldn't say of government but administration? Those are administering the affair of Liberia like, does not care at all. That's the problem with Liberia. Like, because we are in a habit of selecting leaders on the basis of falsehood and lies. And once the man comes out to you and lies to you and you accept the lie, his deception and the gaining power. He will continue to lie to you. There is nothing you can do to change that man because you already believe that this man is this. And later on, when you get to know that this is it, it began embarrassing to you yourself. So there were like two apparent lies. Some other guys say, oh, the man got master's degree from the other place, he got this and other things. Just in few times, being senator, representative, or president, or vice president, will go to a background check. I mean, he has not sat in class in any class in America or Europe. So, like, bro, administration now is based on lies and deception. People say the president will come in, he got 95 billion, they make a connection in France, in Italy, to the other place. Just in less than two years, like, three people have got to know that this man, he got no connection, he's not connected anyway. He does not have no idea of improving anything. Then at least he talk about him, surround himself with people who are unsophisticated even more than him. So we are not going anywhere. Ah, for me, ah, for one, I always like one time somebody was saying protest this and other things, I say protest, yes, that's the best way. But a popular uprising will serve as a deterrent of message for the next leader that will come. If the librarian people can get on their feet, my dear brother, and speak up and carry power low, we no longer need you in our country. We need our country to move forward. Our children are dying. Our children are out of school. We can't find food to eat people that we, we know ourselves like parents. We know ourselves have been seeing librarian like parents or family begging compared to this particular regime. Enough is enough. You need to leave our country have an interim body that will be able to select the rightful person to lead our country that we all can benefit from it. Other than that, Nigeria is going nowhere. We will talk, we will sing the song on radio, on the social media, nothing will be done. Nigeria themselves need to stand up to deliver our country and put our country in the right hand. You can see all the things if the leader is capable, the leader is well equipped to take heed and do what he say. They will get somewhere, but they are not waiting. They don't even they even know what people say. When the Joseph, or for example, when the Joseph protests are coming, people say, "Oh, things will change." We send a resigning message to the president. The president is sleeping. Need to wake up. After Joseph, what happened? We have the worst man there in Liberia. We see people throwing through the party headquarters. We see people in horse. Somebody going to put gas on that horse to bring it. We see people leader or administrator. Making statements that led to riots, violence, and other things. We are seeing a lady who allegedly said she was raped, picking, drops, and dropped by the wayside. So we're getting nowhere. I mean, the only solution to Nigeria problem, Nigeria said, need to get on their feet and get the power, my man. We don't need you. We need for our children to live. We need good education in our country. We need good health sector. We need good security. Other than that, we're getting nowhere. Uh, you talk, you yeah, Thomas, Thomas, uh, Thomas, let me hold you there a little bit because um, I, I agree with uh, with your analysis on the issue on, on the issues, you know. But at the same time, um, 
I think the issue of um, you know using social media and you know we use in uh, talk shows and uh, perhaps we are talking and it's not going anywhere. I, I, I you know I don't want to agree with that because we have seen changes coming through uh, these mediums. Uh, all over, even recently in Sudan, they started with social media. Had it not been social media, it would have been difficult for them, for these people to have converged. And today they're having this power sharing government and civilians are now satisfied. In in the Arab world, that is a similar thing. So uh, don't you think that these, these mediums are the, one that, are the ones that we're supposed to use now, educate the people, like you're talking now, you, you, you're empowering somebody now to say, ah, the thing they better talking about, that, that two things, I mean, I think this, popular uprising, I think you have to be done. Even the last time with the June 17, had it not been because of, you know, the social media and other stuff, I don't think we'll have a huge attendance like that. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, the thing, the thing is, the platform is good, people listen to it, but the message, the refining of the message should be much more forceful. Like, look, life is not sympathy, I can tell anybody. You have to make it or you forget about it. And people are getting also too much in that country, like when you just live in after poverty and say they're watching few people, people they have been doing it all regime, which are for total at least too much. Because when they walk here again like something like in fifth grade, you know, we live with Charles Peter, up to Ellen Johnson says the president already saw him like you was know, was Charles Peter and Ellen Johnson said he I didn't see much of those. But for what I read, I want to see the other thing. They were horrible. And we got in another horrible routine. And now we're going there again. Then what, what becomes the future of the country? My brother, can you imagine you put a hospital there is no there is no electricity in that hospital? Medical doctors have not taken pee. Nurses have not taken pee. Then what the country you live in? The country is not safe. We shouldn't shook up for it. That, oh yeah, the person will succeed. The person will do this. It's not about friendship. Not because I like the person. Or the person is my friend. Then you see a person in your country has gone down here, almost in the sun, then we feel safe and say things will happen. It will happen. Mm -hmm. A message should be like parents should wake up and pick that country. We think they should go kill somebody. But people can get on the street peaceful and get the person to my man. You're not doing well. Our children need to live. No, but I can't let anybody more than myself. If my daughter can go to school, I can't find means to send my daughter to school. Then who am I? Children age 11, 12, 13, 14, they are not the breadwinner for their parents. And which they have never been like that in like Europe. People say, oh, like grown people are lazy, they have created a corridor, the condition for like grown to work, and they say they are not working. They are not been like that. How we are living, my parents, I saw my dad went to work, he came back, we have fun. I didn't eat or, or, or ordinary rent, I ate country rent. My father used to make a fun, although he was working few eight days. But you have fun. Mm. So have you ever created a condition for people to, to, to work? We had it like, like I call it the agriculture cooperative thing that farmer took glue to plant cocoa, coffee, growing and stuff. People did that. But there is nothing of such anything that people listen. You put in up your poverty, they start for election, you keep working a few couple of rent, few dollars to 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 and the person will take it. Because if I don't have it, you come to me, what you raise the give me like $10, $15, I will take it. So that how I reduce, that how I reduce that like, period people. Start for election, you see what person, everybody playing, there's no policy. People are not voting on the basis of policy. But why you can give them because they don't have. So I don't blame them for voting the way they vote. But the best solution that I grow is the leaders are not doing well, my man, give way. Don't find the right person. You can't make it. I mean, that's it. The message should be redirected in different forms. Instead of, well, what can we do to do this or fix the RRI highway and other stuff? You can You don't have the funding. <laughs> There's no international assistance. <laughs> Companies are not coming in because they don't trust the government. That one is, is glaring as a truth, as a fact. There's no company going in that country with that kind of nonsense that goes, sorry, sorry for using that expression on your platform. But there is no company who goes in that country, no investor will go there. From 2018 up to present, all have been lied. The other person coming from Dubai, the other group coming from China, the other group coming from Australia, and the other thing we haven't seen nothing. No people language on the street, no job. Then you say the people are lazy. I mean, what the empowerment is brought in the people in the prison? Then you say the lazy. Who lazy in our country? 
So my little Biagi on Universal Library, I said the person who goes there, Bela, or on the on the road. Even if you go there, Bela, who's going to buy it from you? I mean, it's 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 it's, it's sorry for. So now start giving credence or oh, what kind of solution we can find. The solution is if the leader is not doing well, you need to lead. Now we'll put our eyes together and see how we can move our country forward. Ghana and other people came to us for education, they came to us for food. And now we are going to back up. Guinea and other countries, they came to us for food. In Madimo, they were driven from, from Guinea as a good trip. But when I was told, who said him, who, who said the guy to survive in Liberia? The first president of Nigeria, later for William Pierre Stockman, went to University of Liberia. Through Liberia, he went to London for that. He became the first president of, of Nigeria. So that, that's the country we are talking about. People came to offer us to have safe thing. And now we, we are here to back up. My brother, in Liberia, Uko A, Liberia got the largest rainforest in West Africa. 40% of West African forest is in Liberia. Yeah. But yeah, we, we, our leaders subdue our people to act their poverty. Make them back up so when election comes, you should go big in. When they come, when they car, they feel cash and give it to you, follow them. That's not democracy. We need to change it. They should not do it when they leave. And I would say for now, the 2023, there will be more like you. In less than two years, everything gone. So what's going to happen in the next four years? You will not get nothing yet. You ain't going to help you. He will not help you. The United States government, what's up, will not do it. Especially the kind of administration of guy in America, Donald Trump, he will say it to Liberia. He will not. Donald Trump said America first, America in the middle, America last. So you must fight to get something for yourself. And what the Ghanaians are doing is in Dali. But our leadership take the money, two, three million dollars go Ghana and leave it in a hotel, improving the Ghanaian economy, improving the Senegali economy, improving the foreign economy. You take the money from Central Bank carry and waste it on pleasure. Nothing coming. The three million you carry it in, will you replenish it? What you brought to replace that three million? The more than 50, 50, 55,000 you carry the guinea, you ever brought any money to replace it to the central bank? You only want to empower the Guinea's economy, leaving your people in poverty. So it's not working. Mm. So we should not go there. The money now in the country you could use it for other projects, but the other people see what you're doing. Your reserve. If you put in a reserve, who's going to trust you? Can I go into Susu with you? I say, oh, my you want Susu? You are a Susu part, you know, I'm not working. I don't have an income. You can allow yourself to put your money somewhere for me to go take it. You will not do it. Investors go to where responsible government is. Because if you go to the bank and you go to New York and other things, you can't get nothing in your bank, in your, bank, in your reserve. If it takes a 200 million and carry the library, you will manage it. Where are they going to carry you? Can you pay back? No. The judicial system is racking. The both the lower and the upper house, they are all in the hands, in the pocket of George Weah. If George Weah can't cook, they can't eat. They are like people looking at. Anything you say, that's what, that's what they do. Mm. Both senators and representatives, they all didn't see the draw. If George Weah goes on the football field to play, all the senators are going to go play with him. Ah, like we're looking at. If you go in the ghetto to smoke, all the representatives saying that the speaker will go there with him. Who, who the policy maker? Who gets to think and say, look, this country, it is our future. Our children need to live and see our legacy. We need to set an example that tomorrow we can have a future. The American are laid behind looking. So, I mean, it's sad. The solution to Liberia is the bad government to leave. And we will learn from this experience that next time we're not for people only business of force who only men are millionaires. They may not have a graduate, they may not have this good chance. When they may have blown on his good chance, now they may not have it. Is that what you think he was? That was something like you today. All right, James. Who left in the city has they are PhD. You go check it. Then they have not even they don't even go on the campus. The school need to call it they have to see the campus, they found a minister. He left from here, he went like growing in state, he graduated from Georgia. He does not know the difference between Georgia University and George Washington University. He does not know. Then he said, oh, I got a few courses. When people go here, he has never, he came here, he took a good team out there, he was living in the So Some of never entered school, graduate school in Liberia, he graduated from University of Liberia. He did economy and math and economy. That was it. I agree, bachelor's degree, university education is universal. 
But don't lie with all your potential that you do. I mean, I want something else. False who? Somebody stay here for years, they go by the day, they got two PhDs, they got three masters. When you go check, they don't have it. And he's taking the system and mess it up. I mean, we need to stop it and we the like we need to stand to the people and tell them, look, this is our country. When I live from America or from Europe, I'm going have to see. The Ghanaian also, the Ghana, the Nigerian, the Senegalese because they have good leadership. And we should also in such. Okay. All right, James. All right, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you spoke uh, really, 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 um, you know, spoke well, and uh, your points are really, really on, on point. Uh, thank you very much this afternoon for your contribution. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You know, to be honest, uh, my brother spoke, uh, our brother spoke, and um, a lot of um, almost everything he said uh, is on point. And I think uh, there were the problem is, you know, and until we can, we can put our senses together and act accordingly, we're going to, we, we continue to suffer. And I agree with him because the masses, that means, you know, the population, are the ones that are always giving power to somebody. Are always the ones that, that will put a particular political party in power in terms of leadership. Now, it is the same masses that are responsible to say, well, we gave you our power yesterday, but you are not using it well. So we want it back. It's happening in other countries. That's exactly what, exactly what my brother was saying. And uh, mm -hmm. in this 21st century, we, we are seeing how things are happening and things are changing because the people are exercising their rights. They're exercising their rights. And it is happening nowadays. It's not an easy fight. But when you are fighting for democracy, when you're fighting for your right, you are not doing the wrong thing. You are doing the right, you are doing the right thing. Perhaps it couldn't, you know, it might not be even be uh, for you to see the fruit right now or during your term on this planet Earth, but it can happen tomorrow. All right, let's take a short musical break. Uh, when we come back. We continue from here. <laughs> break of course uh, here on the program uh, a special edition of this program uh, Profile Liberia which you have heard our studio guest uh, Mr. Philip E.P. Woods the second whether we uh, we had some technical problem with him there in the USA so uh, we, have, we have to let go of him 
Uh, Rebecca Wilson, uh, she says, yeah, uh, Abu Kalara gave the people a look in town false hope. That is why he won the election. Mm, yeah. Uh, similar, in, you know, in agreement with what our, what our brother was saying just now, you know, how we allowing people to play on our minds. Honestly, honestly, because uh, we're talking about Ramdan Tin, uh, profile Liberia, we talk, you know, whatever you have in your mind, you can talk about it. Honestly, 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 I really, really thought that these people were going to eat that money, eat the two cover rice, and gave him, and gave him why way. Because, you know, this is a guy that, that was brought to us, especially by the media. They brought him to us and told us that this guy we have documented evidence against him that he is a criminal. Remember some part of this year, any part of this year, the particular radio station and two guys were there on this uh, radio, on Joy FM. The first time I heard about Kamara was on that radio station, on their morning show. And these two guys brought that man's story to light. And they told us that this guy is a criminal. They read the papers, some of the papers they shared with all the read the information and people were calling in and angry about it. Some people were calling and saying, well, you know, this and that, they made this, they made that, they really gave it to him. For almost a week, these guys, they were discussing this guy. But this is what happened just recently. The main guy that was actually heading the radio or this talk show later left the station and went to another station that he was almost furiously against because that radio station is pro President Weir. And it's almost like what their show was about is to reveal the ills in society and the way government officials are functioning and are badly, badly behaving. But then when he got to this other station now that is pro Mensa Weir, this guy changed suddenly. Well, I don't blame him, isn't it? Because um, the station there is there for that purpose. <laughs> Oh, Liberia. They got changed. And today, the very, very people that he was speaking against, the, those that he was actually backbiting, those that you were hitting high on, he is now praising them. And Abu Kamara is number one. Yes, just before the election, this guy, the two guys, because this other man, you know, uh, I mean, he was, he, he stayed at the at the other station uh, controlling things. But this, these two guys started healing this guy, praising this guy, posting, oh, Abu is about to bring 40 million, 20, 20 million to uh, uh, macro loans to women in the market. And I was just somewhere, I, you know, I couldn't, I, I couldn't understand what was going on, to be honest, you know, I mean, why would him be changed so, so, so something like this? For money? I couldn't believe it, guys. Fellow citizens, what I, was, what, I, what I was hearing from these guys and the posts that I was reading from them about this very, very guy they sold to us and told us that he was a convicted criminal. And they were advise, advising people at that time to avoid him. Today, these guys are 
by telling us that this guy, that Abu Kamara is a hero. I get confused with Liberia sometimes. Especially those, those, those of my colleagues that are in the media. Why people can live a life that somebody will say, well, I trust this guy. You don't play with that, with that guy character. You don't play with his inte integrity. He doesn't play with it. You come around him, you want to mess with his, with his or her integrity, they will deal with you. It's hard to find people like that in the media now in Liberia. But this is a thing. Why would you say Matt is so wicked? Matt, Matt did, did, did as Radio LIB. He, he did that. Max did this. We knew we all. I mean, our our background investigation states that when he was working for his local newspaper in the UK, Max did that and did the worst thing also. Then the next two three months, you are there. You 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 back again to tell the people. Oh, Max is a very very good man. He is intelligent. Max is um. <laughs> it's a good character and whatever. So um you know when um when the election came and then I started seeing seeing the posts uh, from these two guys. I just lost touch uh, I just I just lost um lost it. I just lost it honestly to listen to um a radio stations now in the morning in Liberia. I just lost it. And I'm just asking myself, I mean, who should I, who should I listen to in the morning in Liberia that will provide credible news or, or when they're having a talk show, what, what they are telling me now is true. When this kind of a, when this kind of a thing is, is going on, why? So what, what, what is change that you, you advocating for anyway? You woke up in the morning, you're talking blah, blah, blah. Oh, there's corruption at this ministry. Oh, this woman is yes, corrupting. Oh, that ministry, oh, that agency. There's also corruption going on there and whatever. Why would you do that? Or are you only trying to raise the issue for somebody to call you and come and tell you, say, my man, yes, I'm going to find it out. Don't talk about that issue again. Because I believe that's what happened in the case of Abu Kamara. But why would you sell yourself like that? So cheap. That tomorrow somebody will look at you and be afraid of you. To even give you a small contract. They won't trust you. They're not, they're not going to trust you. Okay, we're gonna take our last break and uh
right there. Let me say a big thank you once again. Uh, this is how we're going to end the show here today. Uh, so once again, sorry that we couldn't uh, have our studio guest, uh, Mr. Philip E.P. who's the second uh, due to technical problems. But hopefully tomorrow we'll be here on Profile Liberia. An invitation has been sent to uh, the organizers of uh, September 9th protest in Liberia. Uh, they say they want the Lone Star Company back. Uh, so I invited them to come uh, and talk to us, tell us uh, how and why. Until then, tomorrow, I want to say uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday if you are still and Sunday. For those of you already approaching Monday, wish each and every one of you a wonderful, wonderful weekend. God bless you. God bless the continent of Africa. Above all else, eh? God bless Mama Liberia. Bye bye from my end. Bye bye. Good night. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.